with my latest metabolic research, I wanted to see what would happen to the human body if you cycled 500 kilometers over five days, consuming zero calories. I mean, like, no drink, no food other than water and coffee. But I didn't want to do it on my own, so I put a group of great guys together, and, well, this is what happened. else up yet? No. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right then. Doctor up yet? No. no. <laughs> They've all looked out the window and gone, ah, uh, drive back home. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll get changed. See you in a minute. So we got up to yeah. Glasgow in the motorhomes, all good. Right. Um, one nice. problem with yeah. one of the yeah. riders getting to the train station, so we're about an hour late. Yeah. Uh, we stopped off and we all had a big fat steak um, uh, early afternoon on the Sunday um, with the idea of having nothing but fat, meaning that we're hopefully all in fat burning mode. Uh, we just all fitted up uh, continuous glucose monitors so we can uh, A, make sure nobody cheats, uh, but B, also measure our blood glucose. And then we've just Handed all, out all the gear. We worked out what we're going to measure over the over the weeks. So we're going to measure height to waist ratio, triglycerides, blood pressure, uh, beats per minute, uh, triglycerides. We're going to measure body fat percent, body weight, ketone levels each day, glucose obviously constantly, and resting heart rate. And uh, we'll measure those uh, throughout the week and uh, see how we all perform. As a non-athlete, how are you feeling? Uh, I am excited for a lovely bike ride in good weather. <laughs> this is not what it said on the t-shirt. <laughs> how are you feeling, John? Good, thank you. Yeah. I'm ready for this. Blood sugar's good. Ketones high. Surprisingly high. I haven't even practiced yet. So, uh, ready to go, yeah, ready to do this. Very wet. Not kind of what we explained, uh, expected, and uh, seriously, the first time I've ever ridden a bike in the rain, probably since I was a kid. But we'll see how we go. Uh, all sorted. A bit late starting, but better late than never. Oh my god. 
<laughs> None at the moment. <laughs> is it? One, 120. Well, we couldn't have timed it any better. I got to the island as they were coming round it. So it was perfect timing. So we're going to hop past. Distance on. Okay. Drive safe. Good, just the motorway. Pretty good. Yeah, well, yeah, 35 miles. Like the surface is cold. I can't feel my fingertips. Yeah, it's a fingertip. Legs are okay. Where I got hold back. Yeah. And then I came out. Yeah. Now I see what you meant. Still a bottle of water though. We got one somewhere. Where's our Certainly How entered the tank today. The no, we haven't really come off route. Yeah, yeah. we got road. back. We took a little detour. Yeah, I reckon it probably be on the added on 5k to our route. How are you feeling, John? I'm feeling wet. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going yeah, really I'm strong. Yeah? Um, I'm pushing quite hard and pu pushing out quite a lot of watts. But then um, that came to an end when my my glycogen stores got depleted. I think I just emptied the tank. So when um, I stopped to measure myself and I was all the way up, at, like it appeared to be about 12. But actually, I think that was probably a reading of about eight or nine in reality. If I'd have done a finger prick test, I think it would have been eight or nine. So it's 12 and I thought it's probably on the high side I'll put three units of insulin in, type 1 diabetic, need to bring it down with insulin. So I put three units in and you can see it crashed right down to about three. So um, I think what's going on there is the insulin is now available in the system to push um, glucose into my um, into my cells and it's just hoovered up any available glucose in the blood and that's gone to replenish my glycogen stores and push me right down to like three so um so that's why i'm feeling a little bit depleted because that that blood glucose is not available anymore to, to top, top up my glycogen stores um, and I think it'll probably stay there bumping around at about three for quite some time now. Um, but I'm not feeling any, um, you know, hypoglycemic sensations. You know, there's no, it's an asymptomatic hypo, essentially. Um, because, like I said, tipping back into um, fat burning mode. So I'm getting more and more fatty acids and ketones available to, 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 to fuel my body. What John's just done in his first stint is his competitive instinct has kicked in and he's cycling really, really quick. And he's gone what we call above his anaerobic threshold. And when you do that, your body is looking for that quick burst of sugar to supply a quick burst of energy. So he's gone out of fat burning mode He's now in sugar burning mode, and of course he hasn't eaten for 24 hours, and that's why we're seeing the results uh, on his blood glucose monitor that we're seeing. I think to really understand what's happening in the body when we're fasting and when we do an exercise, we've got to go back really to the cell. And we all know in the cell we've got our DNA, we've got our nucleus and so on. 
But the bit that's most important when it comes to exercise and nutrition and dieting is something called the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria, it's a bit like the battery of each cell. We have them in all cells. Well, nearly all cells. We don't have them in our red blood cells because we don't need them in the red blood cells because they die every three or four months. But this is the battery. Imagine that as your, your Duracell that's, that's, that's you know, giving the energy um, to the entire cell. In fact, they reckon 10% of our entire weight is in fact the mitochondria, so it's quite important. Now, it requires energy, and the energy is something called adenosine uh, triphosphate, or ATP. Now, the body can't store ATP. So we know when we eat stuff, it breaks down into three macronutrients, our protein, it breaks down into our fat and our carbohydrates. Um, but this isn't what we're talking about. It needs to create this special energy called ATP. To do that, it depends on the amount of load on the body at the time, how much the body's having to work. So uh, up to what we call our anaerobic threshold. And that's when uh, you're getting out of breath when you're cycling or you're getting out of breath when you're running. So for me, cycling along at a heart rate of about 120 beats per minute, no problem at all. That's all aerobic. And when we're aerobic, uh, in other words, with oxygen, uh, this is happy to work on fat or sugar. It kind of prefers sugar in one sense because it's quicker to burn. But if you're fat adapted, like us riders on our bike are supposed to be, it will quite happily work on fat. But that's up to your anaerobic threshold. Once you go above that, so we're cycling along, or like John did, cycling along, trying to keep up with James. What's happened now, he's gone above his AT, his anaerobic threshold, and uh, what he's now burning is called uh, anaerobic glycolysis system. That needs sugar. But of course, if you've not eaten, you've got no sugar, you've got no glycogen in your body, and that's exactly what's happened to John. What I'm doing different to the other riders is I'm staying nice and slow, well, slowish, uh, not getting to my anaerobic threshold, and the body's happy to burn fat all day long, but as you keep seeing some of the other riders throughout the video bonking, what's happening is they're going above that, the body's looking for sugar, which it hasn't got. Now, James Crackdell's unique. He's unique because out of all of us, his anaerobic threshold is so high up, like a real high percentage uh, of his maximum heart rate, that he can just carry on burning fat at times when we're, we're trying to keep up with him, when we're trying to burn sugar. I've never ridden a bike yeah. with cleats about four weeks ago um, I probably didn't do as much training as I should have both on the bike and in terms of the right diet oh look at those lovely cows should have eaten more of you um, I had seven pints on the Saturday night and we started first thing today which is Monday it's not how you prep for something like this. Oh. Good. Jake's about 25 minutes in front of you. Oh well. James is about half an hour in front of him. Oh well, really? Yeah. Cool. They're yeah, rather wet. But good. We're all doing different paces. All got different heart rates, different muscles, different ages, different metabolism. I'm taking it easy. I've been only probably 14, 15 mile an hour while we're going, and then obviously the rests in between, bringing it down to about 11. But well, not rests, but can't stop weeing, and that is. No calories, no sugar, no calories. <laughs> How are you feeling? Tired. This bike riding is too much for me. I've been watching them for five miles now and it's really made me tired. I think Jakey fell off twice, eh? Yeah, something like that. I've got to say this right now so my daughter doesn't think I've been irresponsible taking her husband away and him falling off his bike. Falling off your bike 
does happen occasionally, right? If you ride your bike, that will happen. It has nothing to do with fasting. In fact, the opposite is true. When we fast, our eyesight becomes way more clear, like massively clearer. We have, it's easier to concentrate. We have less brain fog. We can hear the cars coming up more because our hearing's better. When you're fasted and you're running on ketones, literally the brain is alive. So Jake falling off and potentially maybe keep watching some other riders falling off has nothing to do with the fast. It's just because they're not as good at riding as they should be. Yeah, seems right at the moment. Okay, <laughs> just uh, every now and again, check your Live 360 and you'll see where Jake is. Well, the Live 360 shows everybody where everybody is. If he is. stops on route, we'll find him, won't we? Yeah. Of course. All right then, we're going. Yeah. See you in a bit. Isn't it good fun, this? <laughs> They want uh, 11 hours in the saddle the whole time, apart from stopping for lots of weeks and uh, you were down water to 4%. and pumping at the tyre. Oh, is phone? Is that phone? Yeah, but we didn't apologies. stop up from there. And we've done 112 miles, and it just shows. Yeah, that's what it feels. I feel as tired as anybody would feel doing a 112 mile ride. Well, no, no more tired or less energy than someone doing a 112 mile ride. Uh, that has food and if you think about it if somebody has food and they need to keep feeding they wouldn't have done it as fast because they'd have had to keep stopping uh, but yeah it was good we both dialed well, into well, our not, fat stores well it's not just that you'll feel lethargic you have something to eat it slows you down yeah um, because you're then I mean, digesting the food yeah well yeah yeah quite uh, I, I wonder how it's going to feel tomorrow I just yeah there's that well, I'm, I'm kind of wondering whether it actually would feel easier to do consecutive days if you're fasted because right. then you eat and it becomes yeah. difficult and yeah. you're having to digest and I wonder whether the yeah. process of ketosis itself is kind of, it just helps with the speed of healing yeah. and then you're able to do more consecutive days. I wonder, I don't know. Find out. Find out tomorrow morning. <laughs> We've just done everybody's bloods, all jumped on the scales, morning two, excuse me, after the first day's cycling. I'll just give you some rough things, so uh, everybody's glucose, considering we're not eating, is well within the safe range. Four sixes, uh, four point, the lowest one's 4.3, so everybody's, some have put six still, good. Everybody's ketones have, have jumped high, one rider's gone up 5.5 on ketones. Heart rates are all good and um, and blood pressure is all good. So uh, yeah, but everything has we would hope it would be. I've got my zero calorie um, electrolytes, and the main value of these is that they don't taste like water, so you don't get sick of drinking water and then dehydrate on the route. So. Also, as I don't drink coffee, they're my only caffeine here. But you should never have all your multivitamins and your magnesiums on an empty stomach. But I always do, because I, I, I'm home mad, I only eat at night. So I've always thought that I have my vitamins and minerals on an empty stomach. But it's normally after a couple of glasses of water and a coffee. And I guess it's not on an empty stomach, because I've got food in there from the night before. So everything was fine this morning because I had all my tablets and now I feel a bit sick. So it is true that you should never take all your multivitamins, especially if you've got like a handful like me on an empty stomach. No Omega this week though because obviously Omega soft gel's got nine calories in and we are zero calorie. Day two after a, a rocky start, uh, feeling really good, done 25 miles, a bit better pace than yesterday. 
and uh, actually enjoying it today. Yes, there was a bit of a slog with the rain, but the sun's out, and uh, we're heading down towards I don't know somewhere. Uh, but all good, all good. Bit of a tail hey. back, bit of a tail back. You are? Bit of a tail back. Yeah. Straight on from it, innit? Yeah. Is it? Straight through this town. Yeah. See in a bit. Watch how you go. Keep a good wake up. How you doing today then guys? Good. Um I think you know if you keep your power output or your heart rate whatever you whichever it is of those you want to look at um, below a certain value you can just go forever and if you're fueling on fat you know add the two things together you know mindful of, for Steve heart rate me it'll be power um, and you're fueling on fat you can just ca continue yeah, yeah. I thought I'd probably be able to do it if we fasted each individual day broke the fast at the end of the day and then carried on yeah and, and I think a big part of this is, yes, the science is there to corroborate what it is that we're saying, but what, what it, I think what it is that we're saying as well is that we've been taught about nutrition a certain way, and your mind becomes fixated on what you've been taught. Yeah. And so we think that, you, you know, we need regular meals, regular energy, and otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be able to do normal things in life. And, well, you know, I think we're demonstrating not only are we able to do day-to-day -day activities, we're able to go out and do you know, huge. Huge, amount, huge, huge amounts of miles and be comfortable doing that and, you know, not need the excessive energy intake that's been recommended. And I think the problem with that is that it's the quality of, you know, the, that energy, it's the quality of the food that's coming in. And, you know, it's rather than nourishing us and enabling us to do things, it's quite the opposite. It's distorting our ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis in a proper way. Yeah. Just be human, maintain your health, preserve your health, and be able to function mentally well as well. Yeah, cycling back the road you come is not fun. <laughs> Yeah, walking back down the M57 wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I took the wrong bridge. Did you get on the motorway? Yeah. yeah. Well done. <laughs> nice. I did think they were going quite fast, it was very painty white. And then I thought, okay, I'm, when everyone's ho hooting at me, I, I stopped. I do remember though climbing up a motorway embankment with you on the 051. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, I, I, that reminded me when I was walking back down, they gave me. Yeah. <laughs> All dogged abuse, and I was walking back down the hard shoulder. Did you have your bike on your back? No, like I was a cyclocross. No, okay. I was like, I was going to walk, try to walk as close to the barrier as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did your Q, Tour de France Q card work? Um, it did for a bit, and then they they weren't always signposted. So even when we got to Lancaster, yeah, the next one wasn't signposted. So I went right. the wrong way, and then I had to go back around, and then, um, but. I was waving it at the truck drivers to show that I wouldn't let them have sat nav and know what they thought I was waving I gave them a card for. <laughs> yeah. It made me feel like I was yeah, there's a reason why I was in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. I just had run corn and both were signposted run corn. Mm. I thought that looks like a nice bridge. <laughs> well, well done for yeah, getting going really fast across that one. Yeah. <laughs> Told John about your dog story. What's the shaggy dog? Oh, no, I, cause I, got, I had to go to, I stopped and I had no phone, so I went, just, to, just going over to 
run corn over the bridges. That was a witness. And so I had no charge, phone charge. So I went to the this, like corner shop to charge my phone. So I buy a charger and uh, they said they could plug it in. And then I wait for charge and I called Barry and said I'm here. And um, whilst Barry's coming I went and had to lie down on the pavement next to my bike. So I had my arm through the the frame so that if anyone hit my bike they'd wake me up. And this, this old fella, right, really kind of probably off a little bit, walks past his dog and then he goes, Are you alright? And I went, Yeah, yeah. He goes, Not many people go to sleep on the pavement here. <laughs> anyway, and I, and I go, No, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my mate to come pick me up. He goes, You're right. I go, yeah. Can I buy a bar of chocolate? I go, I'd love a bar of chocolate, but no. I go, no, no, honestly, I've got to spend my money. I'm like, no, honestly, I'm fine. And he's going, I'm going to dog up here. Sorry if. Um, he licks you, he likes you know, smelling and licking people. Comes out again. I go, how was the dog? It's fine, didn't, didn't touch me. He goes, I'm not surprised you stink. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I first got there, I took my bike, I tried to take my bike into the shop because I'd never looked for it. And the lady's going, you can't, you can't bring it there. And I go, but he's got no locks, I'm going to nick it. And she goes, no one near that bike around here. <laughs> <laughs> people don't ride there. I go, yeah, but it's, it's valuable. He goes, yeah, but no one nick it because you have to wear that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was just abused everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And then you got abused here? They got abused in the car park, yeah. Because I got out of the camper van, mm-hmm. and then this um, this guy yells across the car park, you s***. And uh, I'm like, afternoon, and he goes, you got a mobile home and you're staying in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fair enough. <laughs> so it's not been a good day. <laughs> Soft plan. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I probably am. I was moaning about my day just because I got lost and I was angry with myself and yeah. dropped my camera on the floor and fell out. Well, oh, nothing, James, compared to yours. Yeah, but I am probably knackered now. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can be sure that I... Oh, no. <laughs> I love those pyjamas, Jake. Thank you very much. I'm known for two things. Uh, spaffing all my ketones at 60 miles. And <laughs> very nice pyjamas. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. I can't tell the other riders off, but I can tell you off. <laughs> I know what you're going to tell me off for what, as well. What? For going too fast. Too fast? I know. I, uh, I'm riding like I did in my training and that is not the right way to do it because in my training although I was training fasted for 24 hours day two I found really really tough and I think that's because day one did 88 miles but I was probably fueling mostly off the glycogen in my liver whatever's left yeah whereas day two so now that's probably we're talking 48 maybe slightly more hours yeah um, since the last meal, yeah. there's no glycogen in my liver. All muscles. All, uh, yeah, muscles probably m- mostly depleted as well. And although my ketones are kicked in, day one they were 0.2 millimoles. This morning they were two, so it's quite a big percentage yeah. increase. That's not enough yeah. on its own to do that, so I yep. do need to slow down. You got to come down to literally 60, 65 percent your heart rate max, mm. and then it'll happily just sit there, burning fat. And other than the odd time you're going up a really steep hill, other than that, and that must be in your lowest gear, or whatever. So minimise it. Other than that, you should never feel hard. And the second you feel any effort in any part of your body, you're going too fast. Yes. Yeah. Just cruise, cruise, cruise. You'll be burning way more body fat. As soon as you go faster, you're not burning as much body fat anyway. So if the target is to finish the event and lose weight, then you've got to go as slow as you can. Uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the change I've got to enact. Day three tomorrow. Longer days, but feel great at the end. Well, no, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> that was a miss, sir, man. <laughs> feel better at the end. Yeah, I think, I'll feel, I think I'll feel better tomorrow. I'm going to take that on board. Good. Uh, hopefully I'll have even better ketone levels tomorrow as well and I will more liberally apply the chamois butter as well because my bum was hurting by the end of today okay you did that I don't want to end the conversation great (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't really having a go at Jake there well I was because he's my son-in-law but um, 
It's so important that people get this message, right? And the message is this, and let's break it into two parts. You can fast for days at a time without exercise, dead easy, without ever feeling hungry, as long as you're what called fat adapted. In other words, as long as your body doesn't care whether the, the energy it's getting is burning its own body fat or fat that you're eating, if you're fat adapted, seriously, you can fast three, four, five days, never feeling hungry. And Jake did that before, but didn't overlay it with exercise. Now, when you overlay it with exercise, the body again is dead happy to just burn fat as long as you don't get above what we call our anaerobic threshold. And once you're doing that, you're pushing too hard, it needs that quick burst of energy, and it can't quite get that from fat. Even if you're fat adapted, it's looking for the sugar. And that's why Jake keeps bonking. I've been telling him all the way along, got to slow down. It's not about the winner, it's about getting to the end. The, the scientific experiment is the key thing, but also over the last few months, uh, I hurt my wrist so I couldn't do much exercise. I went away to one of those all-inclusive hotels. So I have piled on a few pounds, so for me, the second benefit was uh, weight loss, because I, I probably stone overweight. And um, I was a bit disappointed after day two, jumped on the scales last night, and during the day I'd only lost a pound. But that's, well, let's see what happens overnight. So I weighed myself this morning, and the impossible has happened. I lost four pounds overnight. Now, got to work this out because they say a pint is a pound the whole world round. So that meant I'd have to weed four pints overnight. Well, I didn't. In fact, I had a couple of glasses of water in the night. Did go twice, but maybe most I weed a pound out. So that explains one of the pounds. So three more pounds. Well, my base metabolic rate normally would burn about one and a half thousand calories maybe while I'm asleep if that uh, one and a half thousand calories are just under half a pound so there's one and a half pounds where did the two and a half other pounds go no poo because you don't pee when you're fasting for two days um, and I just can't explain it so well I can or I'm going to and I'm going to do a lot more research and speak to a lot more doctors I think just like when they say you've been sprinting that you your muscles are in so much micro trauma that they are burning up a load more energy to fix themselves. I've never looked into the literature on this before, but it must be the same after 11 hours of cycling. You haven't got micro traumas going on, but the body just must be doing so much repreparation for whatever the next event is, and I won't say so much repairing, but doing something, because it burnt an extra couple of pounds. Anyway, I'm over the moon, but I'm not over the moon because I can't work out the science yet, but I will do. I've got to finish this evening as I've got a commitment I've been unable to move. So the plan is I crack out a load more kilometers today so I've still done the 500 kilometers but in three days rather than five. much more than that at the minute. That he's, way? Yeah, he was behind you. Oh. He'd gone wrong um, and when he, were, he saw John and then he was going the opposite way to John. Right. Uh, we waited for you lot to go through, right. uh, tried ringing him, didn't get him. Uh, he then phoned me to tell me it, it fell off uh, and that's when he, he put it up on the Facebook group as well right. that it fell off and uh, he's going to go and buy a map. He's having trouble with the nav, so he's going to buy a map. Is he all right, do you think? I asked him if he's okay, and he said, yes, he's fine. So, you know what James is like? It's 
So when, he said, when he you said, say he put it on the Facebook Facebook um, group, is it yeah. for public or? Yeah, for all of us on ours. Oh, I on see. The I see group. WhatsApp group. Okay. I, I said Facebook group. I should have said WhatsApp group. Yeah. Uh, Psychopath 45 got me in the gravel. I came off. Phone is kind of working, but maps took no. Uh, back to crew. How far? How far behind us is he? He was quite away. He, he was. He hadn't moved for 30 odd minutes when we saw you come past us earlier so that's when i was trying to phone him to see where he was and it, he called us just before is, then is it worth he's told us to carry on and if anything if he gets to a point where he can't he'll phone me and i'll just well, do you well okay well listen mate take it easy but if you're not if you're feeling anything then just uh, let barry know and i'm you know, I'm, I'm around, so I can take a look whenever you feel you need to. Honestly, I'm, 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 there's nothing to show apart from uh, ego and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <but> Forget <laughs> the ego, mate. Forget the ego. The ego uh, how fast were you going, James? Hardly any at all. It's, it's quite crappy, that 45. Yeah, it? yeah. But you've only hit your hip and not your head or anything like yeah, that. No, 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 no. Only hip and uh, elbow, so that's fine. All right, mate. It's all good. All right. Okay, I know. I know you'd say different otherwise. So we trust you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Cool, man. Love you, mate. You take care. I think you might want to go through there and up there. Ah, oh, fuck off. Yeah, we're off course. Got to do a U-turn, mate. Okay. You okay? You're the curb again. That was just clumsy. Completely my fault. The problem is I felt on exactly the same spot. Oh shit. <sighs> that was really clumsy. Sorry. No, my no, fault. no. Totally my fault. That was my fault. Going the wrong way. Because I. I was going to do a U-turn and I noticed that. the car coming, then I had to slow down. Exactly the same spot oh, no. as last. And that the curb again. I don't think I've broken anything, but it is, it's really sore. Oh. Um, and I think it's because I'm... It's been sore since the first floor. And then we had that guy shout at us, which didn't help. That definitely didn't help. What did he say? I didn't even hear him. He went dickheads. And there was really nothing wrong. The new law says you can ride side by side. Jake got a puncher. Oh, no, uh. This was it. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad we got your camera on. We got Ali take a fall. Oh. You got a fall? Yeah. Who's going to ask if you're okay? I did, mate. I cuddled him and everything. I'm, 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 I'm absolutely fine. Seriously. Cuddled him. The only problem with that fall was that I fell on exactly the same place that I fell on the first day. <laughs> um, and so I fell on a quite a bad bruise a, a, a so, um, so I got kind of doubly injured in the same place which actually hurts quite a bit um, it doesn't hurt so much cycling but it does hurt when I'm off the bike and I'm walking I don't think I've done massive damage I do think it would have been a lot worse had I not been carnival that's without a shadow of a doubt if, I hasn't, if, I, if I'm not on a high fat low carb that, carnivorous what? diet there's absolutely no way why I would have survived that. I would have had an injury because why do you I say felt... that? Though? What makes the difference? Well, I mean, so 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 let me explain. So I've, the mechanism of the injury is important. I fell on an outstretched um, hand, and um, you know that puts you at risk. And then you know I hit my elbow and smack on the same place I had hit my hip on the first day. Um, in terms of bone health and bone density. The fact that 
you know, we're having a high fat, um, you know, protein, protein optimized, low carbohydrate diet means that, you know, our, um, our bone density is going to be much healthier had we been on, you know, a, um, a higher carbohydrate plant based diet, for example. Um, so if you're going to do distances like this, if you're going to challenge yourself in any way, you're probably going to put yourself at risk, but it's a case of, am I able to get through that? And yeah. I seem to have gotten away with it, um, which just speaks to the protection that, you know, a diet that's optimized, that's suitable, you know, for humans that that's in alignment with good health um, actually is quite protective. And it wasn't his fault, by the way. I went the wrong way because I can't sat nav off my thing properly. And then some guy called, called me a dickhead as I went to do my U-turn. Totally safe, I wasn't being a dick, well I am, but I wasn't. And of course then, the fact that he had to then do a U-turn and follow me, after somebody just screamed, dickhead, he lost his concentration, hit a curb and went over. Well, I was just wondering who the dickhead was, and I looked over at Steve, you know, and obviously he's not a dickhead, so that leaves one person. <laughs> no, I think almost definitely the other way around, Doctor. <laughs> So today was an interesting day. Um, got up and realized that I'd done a lot more miles than I thought I would on day one and day two, and I was feeling fantastic. So I decided to do a massive big loop into Wales and back out uh, and do 120 miles, because for me, I want to ch change the experiment. I want to change it from 500K to 500 miles. How can I do that? Well, for the last two days, day one was a bit different with some big hills. I did go into my, uh, beyond our, my anaerobic threshold the first day, but the last two days, I've stayed below that. I've kept my heart rate nice and stable around 60 to 65% of my max. I'm only burning body fat, which I've got quite a bit of, um, and, and therefore not hungry at all. So I feel fantastic. The, the brain's really clear. I'm seeing colors I don't normally see. Weight's coming off. And while some of the other riders are really struggling, mainly because they're trying to go too fast, mainly because they're going beyond their anaerobic threshold. And even though in day-to-day -day life, they're good fat burners because they eat that way, you know, they're, they're very much meat eaters, uh, fat eaters as opposed to um, uh, carbohydrate eaters. So they're, they're fat adapted for normal life. But if you keep going above your anaerobic threshold, at times your body won't want that quick hit of sugar. Uh, also today was a bit of a strange one. Uh, James had a, a, a very important thing that he had to shoot off to. So he put the extra miles in as well. So he's completed his 500k, the original goal, but in three days. Uh, but I'm now going to push it to 500 miles simply because I'm in that zone and I'm feeling great. Please, please just fall into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is what father-in-laws are supposed to do, look after their sons, you know, treat them nicely, you're supposed to keep, keep look after your sons, treat them nicely, and yet I've absolutely broken him, I've shattered him, I've ruined him, I've crucified him, he aches here, he aches here, he aches here, most importantly, he aches here, which is not like Jake, that is right, the yeah. most positive man of all, is aching in between here. He's so unlike him. Is it the hunger or is it the effort? Um, or the type of effort? You don't shy away from effort. <laughs> it's totally broken. I don't even know where the problem is. No, it's, uh, what is it? It is... This little scratch on your leg. Yeah, it's that. You know oh man, that's evil. You know what I say, you need to break to build yourself back up. Yeah. And you Come are. On, what is it? I need to know. Provide the glue. Uh, what is it? What I, is I, it? I, are you hungry or <laughs> just a. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? I, I actually am hungry. I yeah, think that's what I am hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry at myself. <laughs> you're sleeping alright though. I actually am sleeping alright. Because I didn't, so. No. So you've got me on that one. Yeah, alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
83 miles at him. Got a puncture. <laughs> so, my tyres are punctured. My body's punctured. My spirit is punctured. <laughs> Feeling good there, yeah? I walked a hundred miles. No food in five days. Done. I have done coast to coast, unsupported, with two kids. So I'm to carry all their gear and keep them motivated. Done. I've walked to the <laughs> North Pole <laughs> and got a stamp in my passport from Santa whilst carrying the weight of a baby elephant on my back. Done. But this... I'm done. So my son-in-law sadly had to drop out at the end of day four. Uh, awesome achievement though. Let's, let's <laughs> no bones about it, 400k plus. Uh, over his first four days. But something I haven't mentioned yet is lactic acid. And many of you that, that maybe do a lot of exercise will know about lactic acid. Lactic acid is a byproduct of when we burn energy within our mitochondria, within our cells, uh, but at high energy. So when we're burning energy with oxygen before we get to our anaerobic threshold, we don't have any lactic acid. Lactic acid, that, that muscle soreness, only really happens when you're burning without oxygen. So the byproduct of burning lots of sugar, lots of carbohydrates for energy, you get lactic acid. And that's in biking called bonking. You just build so much lactic acid, your legs won't go round. And that's what happens with sons, isn't it? And son-in-laws, they never listen to dad. And I kept saying to him, go slower, slow down, slow down. But he's such a racing machine that, well, he didn't listen and, he, you know, sadly he's had to give, it, uh, give in today. Also, the fact that Saturday, the day before we started, or two days before we started, he had a load of beer up the top of the mountain. So maybe there's a double lesson to learn there. The rest of the team need to be about 50 miles per day to complete their 5k, 5k challenge. Um, I need to do about 74 miles to get to my new extended uh, uh, target of 500 miles and still be in time to get to the PHC conference for the opening dinner where there's going to be lots of doctors, scientists and people waiting to hear the results of our latest metabolic challenge. Completed. Woo. Amazing. Well done, pal. Cheers. <sighs> well done, well done mate. Superb doctor. Well done, man. Me? Good job. Woo. Boys. Wow. How was that? Fantastic. Brilliant. Fantastic. No fatigue. Nope. I've oh, had it. What an effort. Energetic. Seriously. Had a real blast. What an, effort, what an absolute effort, seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well done, man. The spectacular thing is everybody is feeling fine. My legs yeah. are feeling fine, your legs are feeling yeah. fine, your legs are feeling fine. You know, the only ache I have is a little bit in the neck from yeah. the position yeah. that we've been in. Mm. But other than that... I've done lots of 60, 70, 80 mile rides with Big Change Charity. A little bit faster, admittedly, but you know, nice meals at the night. Yeah. Ni nice meals at lunch. But by the time I got, you know, in the evening, I was crucified. I yeah. ate head to toe. I got on the bike the next day. Agony didn't enjoy it. But fasted and a little bit slower. Mm, Fantastic. Very interesting. The other interesting thing is my two falls and the massive bruise it left 
it already has started getting better. Well. Wow. From a massive bruise, it's starting to fade. So literally, <laughs> last night it was looking like it's getting better already. That's fantastic. Really fascinating. People be forgiven for thinking you found a superpower, wouldn't they? Yes. Yeah. Well, it is a superpower. The elixir of life. <laughs> better show. No, we no food or calories for five days while cycling 500 kilometres, and they've just done it. Woof! Cool. When this is all finished, I need to sit down and look at the data in a bit more detail, especially for my experts and doctor friends. But I think the two big takeaways for me has been how quickly everyone's HR, HRM scores have improved throughout the week, but also how our rapid heart rate. I've got better virtually day on day. And that's like, that's like really important stuff because your heartbeat, your, your, your beat per minute really does echo how your body is feeling, how much stress your body is under. And it never lies. I mean, just one example. I got up some hills yesterday and uh, my heart rate was going up. And I couldn't understand why it was going up. But then I looked down at, at my altimeter and I was going for a very slight incline. I didn't see it with my eyes, I didn't actually physically feel the difference, but the heart rate knew, never lies. Your, your heartbeat, your heartbeat per minute is a massive indication of how relaxed or how stressed the body is at any one time. So I set out really with two questions with the experiment. Um, could it be done? Uh, and I think we've answered that. Yes, it can. I know Jake didn't quite get to the end, but there was lots of lessons learned there. It wasn't the fast that got him. It was just, he was going too fast. Um, and I felt so good at the end that I think, well, I exchanged, you know, so extended it from 500K to 500 miles. I honestly believe I could have done Land's End to John O'Groats fasted. Maybe that will be the next challenge. Um, because once you get in that fat burning mode, as long as you don't push it too high, no problems whatsoever. I also learned that, that we all have different anaerobic thresholds. So I couldn't work out at the beginning, how could James Cracknell be going so fast and at times being you know, hours ahead and still not eating any food? And the answer is because his body is so well trained, his anaerobic threshold is so high that, that he's able to take oxygen in and then stay in an aerobic uh, system where he's just burning his body fat as opposed to the rest of us by then, we've already gone past the AT and then we're, we're looking for sugar. So really interesting that we all have different levels at which we can uh, train at in a fasted state. It does therefore mean that even people doing triathlons and, and uh, you know, the elitist of athletes can do it fasted as long as their anaerobic threshold is nice and high. So yeah, it's doable. Next thing we looked at was the met metabolic markers. You know, how did that affect our health? Uh, because all right, saying you can do something, but is it good for your health? Well, there are five metabolic markers that, that, that globally now are accepted uh, to tell you how well your metabolism is. Uh, and we call it metabolic syndrome if, you, if you're not very well. In fact, sadly, uh, four out of five adults in the UK and around the modern world, four out of five aren't metabolically well. And those five markers, um, we look at blood pressure, we look at waist to height ratio, we look at triglycerides, how much fat's in the blood, uh, we look at uh, 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 blood sugar levels and HDL. Those combined, uh, through our sponsors, HRM, uh, uh, Health Results, they have something called HRM, which is Health Results Metabolic Score. And uh, throughout uh, the event, uh, we were taking all those measurements and uh, all of our metabolical markers and the final score in this algorithm improve for every rider. And that's fascinating because this is indicating that even though we were putting it under a certain amount of stress and we weren't eating, across those markers, across our blood pressure, um, across uh, our triglycerides, our HDL, by the beginning and the end, all markers were better. That's fascinating because lots of people would, would assume that actually you might have achieved it, but damaged the body, but actually the opposite was true. The other thing that's really, really interesting is that I believe that your, the beats per minute of your heart. Now, you know, some people will have a, a, a resting heart rate of 50 or 60. Some will have a resting heart rate of 80, 90, 100. It doesn't actually matter that much what yours is, but what you want to do is monitor it throughout your life because the more you can be below your average, 
resting heart rate. You know your body's well recovered, it's well rested. Uh, if it's above your normal resting heart rate, maybe you're stressed, maybe you're drinking too much alcohol, maybe uh, you know, uh, you're not getting enough sleep. And all of our resting heart rates, except from James, because this is always fantastic at like 40 beats per minute, all of our resting heart rates throughout the event just got better and better and better. An indication, above all indications, that the body was actually thriving on the event as opposed to suffering from the event. But if you want to know your own sort of metabolic score, get hold of a health results uh, metabolic practitioner or buy the kit for yourself at home and measure those five markers because those five markers are the markers of good health, longevity, and I suppose in many, many ways, fitness levels. Next question was, what would I end the fast with? Finished 501 miles and uh, five days exactly actually to the hour uh, since we last ate. And uh, Connor, my brunette cameraman said, what do you want to finish on? And I went, oh, Jake said a Scotch egg. I actually fancy a Scotch egg. I said, but don't get me a rubbish one, like get me a Waitrose or, you know, Tesco's finest. He's done better than that. He drove to Jeremy Clarkson's ah. farm shop and has got me freshly made this morning scotch egg. And this is going to break my five day fast. I know it's got breadcrumbs on, but right now, <laughs> I'm not going. Connor, Jeremy Clarkson, I salute you. <laughs> yes! Wow. Thank you.